Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Hayden Balgavy and here are some of the top stories we are following for you now at noon. Russia steps up its attacks on Ukraine civilian areas. I'm Natalie Brand with a look at how a bridge explosion in Crimea sparked the intensifying violence. Plus, after multiple shootings over the weekend in central Arkansas, we check in on the ongoing investigations. And audio from one of the officers defending the Capitol on January 6th released today. Now, the impact it might have on the House committee hearings, that's coming up in five minutes. We begin today as the war in Ukraine is intensifying in civilian areas after a bridge was blown up in Crimea over the weekend. Russia unleashed a series of deadly attacks on Ukrainian cities far beyond the front lines. Natalie Brand has the very latest from Washington. Russian bombs left the streets of Kyiv, Ukraine's capital city, in flames. The blast striking densely populated civilian areas, one even hitting a children's playground. The terror visible on the streets is illustrated by this young woman who posted on social media during the attack. She appears to be okay. A pedestrian bridge near Kyiv's Arch of Freedom was also targeted, and the southern city of Zaporizhia was hit again overnight. More than 60 civilians have died there in the past 10 days alone. The deadly barrage on at least 10 cities is believed to be direct Russian retaliation for an attack on a major bridge in Crimea, a crucial link between Russia and the territory it illegally annexed. Russian President Vladimir Putin called it an act of terrorism aimed at destroying civilian infrastructure and warned of, quote, harsh retaliation. With Russia stepping up attacks, the U.S. Embassy is urging Americans to shelter in place and leave Ukraine when it's safe to do so. Last week, President Biden said the possibility of nuclear Armageddon is at the highest level since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. I think Joe Biden is right to just, you know, get this country ready for the fact that you are dealing with an incredibly dangerous human being in Russia. The war is going badly. As Ukraine braces for more attacks, President Volodymyr Zelensky in a televised address said Russia is trying to destroy us and wipe us off the face of the earth and to spread panic and chaos. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Turning our attention to the weather here at home, meteorologist Nathan Scott is with us this afternoon. Nathan, I have to admit, I just got back from vacation. It was a nice week off. I come back, the weather still remains perfect. I'm loving it. Well, welcome back, Hayden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've enjoyed really nice weather out there this weekend. Today, though, there's a few slight changes, and here's one of those changes. I'm going to show the radar loop. I haven't shown this for, what, two weeks now, it seems like. Uh, a few showers moving in here from Oklahoma. Upper level disturbance trying to produce a few spotty showers, primarily to the north and west of the metro. Look at the cloud cover extending all the way just to the west of Pulaski County, holding the numbers down into the 70s. Meanwhile, it's 81 in the capital city, 79 in Stuttgart, but 67 in Fort Smith. Now, there will be the opportunity of an isolated spotty shower moving through primarily locations to the north and west of the metro. Most of us will stay dry and we'll just see some clouds. A chance of showers remains in place tonight. Once again, primarily for northwest and north Arkansas. So today we'll see a mixture of sunny clouds, more clouds off to the west, more sun. If you're watching us to the east, temperatures ranging from probably the upper 70s in west Arkansas, low to mid 80s for the rest of central Arkansas. We've got a better chance of showers and storms arriving for the middle part of the work week as a cold front moves in. I'll have more on that coming up. Now the latest in a crime alert with a violent weekend in the heart of downtown Little Rock. Two shootings leaving one person dead and two others hurt. Now here's what we know this afternoon. As we've been following this story for some time now, the homicide happened near 4th and Center Streets. Now Little Rock police responded around 2 a.m. on Sunday. That's where they found a 19 year old man shot several times. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Now it appears that dozens of shots were fired in front of the tower building. Now on Sunday morning, as we've been discussing, detectives were still on scene collecting evidence. Now the crime scene investigation unit had markers for more than 100 bullet casings on the ground along 4th Street between Center and Louisiana. Now so far, the victim's name has not yet been released. Police tell us the 19 year old man that was killed just two hours after two teenagers were shot in the Little Rock River Market area. 
Investigators are looking to see if surveillance video caught what led up to the shooting just before 1030 Saturday night. Now we're told both teens are expected to be OK. Police haven't said if both downtown shootings are connected. A woman is still recovering after a shooting spree in Conway at three different locations on Friday night. Now, we first brought you that breaking news during THV 11 630 Central. A 25 year old woman is the only surviving victim. She was airlifted to a Little Rock hospital after being shot near the intersection of Highway 64 and Salem Road. Now, a short time later, Conway police found a 48 year old woman dead on Newcastle Drive. Minutes after that, they found a 29 year old man dead on Donahue Avenue. Now, police say the suspect, 32 year old Prince Michael Ajet Tumobi, is shot, actually shot himself after a police chase down near I 40. He was taken to the hospital. A check of the Faulkner County Jail records overnight shows he still has not been booked. The Conway police say the suspect knew the three people he was targeting. Well, new this morning, we're getting a look at unique ways that some young people here in Arkansas can discover their career path. It's through virtual reality. Check this out. Boys and girls clubs across the state are getting the VR headsets. They've already arrived in Benton County, where their program offers immersive walkthroughs of several careers. Officials there say these kids, they can't get enough of it. It's a friendly way, it's a, or it's a fun way uh, to use technology in a way that the kids relate to. Um, and again, it, it's, it's really fun because they feel like they're playing video games, but they're, they're getting exposed to all these various different careers. Money from the American Rescue Plan is covering the costs of these virtual reality systems. Turning to national news, CBS gained access to audio secretly recorded by one of the police officers injured in the assault on the U.S. Capitol. Now it comes from a meeting with Republican lawmakers after the attack, and it's being released ahead of what could be the January 6th committee's last public hearing that's scheduled for Thursday. The officer in question says what happened in the meeting only added to his suffering. Scott McFarland has the very latest. Hailed as a hero, on January 6th, Officer Michael Fanone was beaten, tased, and wounded, trying to stop the rioters. Which way do you want to go? Which way do you want to go? go back inside? Now, in connection to a new book by Fanone, CBS News has been given the first access to a surreptitious audio recording he made during a June 2021 meeting between officers who responded January 6th and House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, who spoke about his actions at the Capitol that day. So I was trying to convey to everybody I know, because they're not inspired here, what is happening inside here. Um, and that's when I went on television, too. I said, the president, I wanted to end it. The mother of Officer Brian Sicknick, who died of natural causes a day after the attack, was also in the meeting and asked McCarthy why then-President Trump didn't call off the mob. He knew what was going on. He knew they were fighting for hours and hours and hours. You know, just... In another exchange, Fanon challenges McCarthy when the Republican leader urges against politicizing January 6th. If we don't handle it in a political way, I don't believe that I don't, I mean, unfortunately. Listen, Kevin, I agree with you. The problem is it is political because it happened here on Capitol Hill and it involved a political movement. It involved a group of extremist white right right wing uh, element of our you know, American society, which was mobilized by politicians. And that's just a fact. In a separate meeting with Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, Fanon described the assault officers faced. And Fanon writes, Graham responded, you guys should have shot them all in the head. We have much work yet to do. Fanon's revelations come as the House January 6th Select Committee prepares to return to the spotlight this week following a summer of behind-the-scenes investigating and seeking more records from the U.S. Secret Service about missing January 6th text messages. We've received a huge amount of documents from the Secret Service and have learned some additional things. Uh, so we uh, plan to present uh, what we found out uh, working through this summer. I think it will shed some light on the events of the day and the events leading up to it. 
The January 6th Select Committee has just weeks remaining to finish its work and issue its final report. Neither Congressman McCarthy nor Senator Graham returned requests for comment from CBS News about their conversations with Officer Fanon. Scott McFarland, CBS News, Washington. Harvey Weinstein will be on trial in Los Angeles today facing new sexual assault allegations. The 70 year old former movie mogul is facing charges of rape and other counts involving five women who will appear in court to tell their stories. Weinstein is already serving a 23 year sentence after being found guilty of rape and sexual assault in New York. Protests in Iran over the death of a woman who died in police custody have entered a fourth week. Over the weekend, female college students in Tehran screamed get lost to Iran's president as he visited their campus. Hackers interrupted state-run TV with the message, join us and stand up. Iran's regime continues to respond with force. The group Human Rights Watch has documented the deaths of dozens of protesters. And cleanup and repair efforts are underway after Hurricane Ian. What Florida is doing to help residents cope with the losses after the break. Nathan. Well, Hayden, we got lots of sun out here into downtown Little Rock right now, but I think we will see increasing clouds. There's a slim chance you could see a stray shower, but the chance of showers and storms do go up by the middle part of the work week as a cold front moves in. I'll have more on the timing and how much we could see coming up.